Let me also get this one here, and I will explain this literal code. So in my dispatcher, I'm able. To, I'm now ready. Please. I'm now ready to modify it. I'm now ready to modify it. So the first thing I want is to tell my configuration file what class has the mapping methods to handle every request for the admins. So that is gonna be a package where I'm gonna contain all my classes, right? So this is done by the annotation component scan. And inside the base package, I need to provide the package name, only the package name, right? Where I contain all my controller class. So I'm gonna, we are gonna agree that we are gonna call this package which we are going to create here in the SRC. It's going to be called Home Insurance on that controllers. Okay, so Home Insurance the controllers. So now my front end controller or dispatcher knows where are my classes that have mapping methods to handle every request for an admin user. Now I need to tell that, hey, there's gonna be some weird annotations that is not necessarily coming from the Spring MVC um, framework, but from other frameworks, for the interfaces that are put there, and you need to be able to activate it. That's essentially what this next line gonna mean. So MVC, no annotation driven. And the last thing, the last thing that this thing takes, and I promise you that's the last thing you will ever do, <laughs> is that everything that the mapping methods are gonna do, they return to this file. I know it seems weird, this is a XML file, this is not a Java class, this is not coding, it's just tags, but everything returns to this file, essentially. The application says, okay, you are an admin, go here. This is where the mapping methods come from. Okay, mapping methods, you done the work, return to this file, and now you need to represent some data. How you represent data with JSP? Well, where, where do I find the JSP? Well, that's the view resolver. And where do we have the JSPs? files in the web content uh, so I need to say forward slash if I have my JSP files in the web INF I put forward slash web INF if I have a folder inside the web content and it's called views and in there I have my JSPs I need to say views forward slash so what the resolve, view resolver says, after the controllers have returned everything, the, return, the controllers are gonna return an object which is called a view, a model and view object, which contains data and a JSP bind to it. So it represents a JSP and an object with data in it. So what this thing does is, it says, where do I find the JSPs? Well, you have it in the web content, so that shows forward slash. What is the extension of this file? It can be HTML, it can be other type of files. Since we are working with JSPs, the extension is JSPs. So that is essentially what this file does. Where is the mapping methods? Where annotations that we need to use along the way? And then how to find the JSP? That's it. Okay, so this this file is con contains like the heavy work of of Spring MVC. Then how we handle how we do the logics 
is in this package right here. Okay, so this package is going to contain every logic that we need to do. So for instance, create this package here. And now I need to create a, a controller that is just for the admin. So I'm going to call it user controller. And notice a controller is essentially a simple class. Now, how do we tell ScreenMPC that this is a controller? Yes, it's inside the home insurance controller package, but that's not enough. We need to tell this class to act or behave as a controller. A controller meaning that it can map a, a URL pattern to a service. So the way we do that is by sending the annotation controller. Okay, and that is that annotation is coming from the dependencies that I made available for you. So how do we access this? We access it, this controller by going to forward slash admin, forward slash anything else. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually take a request that is coming from the JSP, from the server, uh, upon logging it in, and render some data, render some, um, some JSP. So we're gonna create a public. This method needs to return either a string. The string can has to be the name of the JSP that you wanna render. If it doesn't return a string, it must return a model and view object which contains data and a JSP name. So model and view. And this one is gonna call index admin. <coughs> now, how do we say, okay, we go to forward slash admin, forward slash, and I just wanna say the home of admin. So my, my route is um, admin home, right? So I need to say annotation um, request mapping. And remember where we're coming from. We are coming from a, a the user servlet, and we are currently in the do post method, right? So we need to go to the do post. So we need to say the value, how we get the URL pattern. This is called admin home. So that's like, you see the annotation on top of the servlet that's called servlet route? Well, that's the same thing here. That's admin home. That's the route how to get to this particular method. The next thing is, um, how do we call that one? Uh, method, and it's equals to, yeah, I never remember this one. Give me one second. Unacceptable. <laughs> right. <laughs> I remember all those things, but not, not this one. Unacceptable. <laughs> Request method. request method, and the method that we're gonna do is a post. So, all the things, you can relate this as a servlet, like this is the method for the do post, right? And how we get to the servlet is by going to admin home. But what a controller does is that it has a bunch of methods, and you can call them wherever you like, Although you need to set a route for each method, so it's, this is more flexible than a flat, um, than a servlet. A servlet only contains a do post and a do get, and inside those methods we need to be able to parse every action with a parameter action. We no longer have to do that in a controller. We need to parse actions by the methods mapping itself. 
and setting different 